Hey everyone, and welcome to the 15th episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to work with stems, and I'm going to talk about some more advanced sampling techniques, such as sidechaining and choking. While most of the time you can work off your desired song's mp3 file, it's always better to have access to stems of that song. So what are stems then? Stems are individual audio files that when put together, make up the whole song. Usually, each audio file contains a single instrument. You start by loading the stems as if they were normal audio files, each in their own track. Then make sure you've got the correct BPM for your song. You can use the same method you would use for a normal mp3 file. After you've found the correct BPM, your stems should already be synced up to one another. If they're not, feel free to drag them around left and right until they all play at the same time. So now we can actually listen to the individual components of a song. This is the drums track. We got a hats track. This is the lead melody. And when we combine them all together, we can hear the full song. This is extremely useful when you're making your own cover because now you can play all of the instruments separately and you don't have to worry about using complex techniques to extract other sounds. I'm going to start by sampling this build-up section. First I'll take care of the drums. This is a clap that constantly repeats. We can take the last clap because it has the longest tail of all of them. And then we can put it everywhere else. So we're going to play the exact same clap for each of these hits. Then we have this here effect has a pretty nasty upriser. We'll just cut that up into one sample. And then there's this lead melody part. So now you can try to play around with the sound. It sounds like the same notes being played over and over. We find the longest one, and then we can put it elsewhere. And it sounds the same. So we can actually reuse that sound for each of these notes. The longest one here is this one. And we can apply a similar technique to the rest of the lead melody. And for now I'm going to ignore this vocal section, not to make this tutorial overcomplicated. So now let's put all of this onto a drum rack. I'm going to put the clap hit here. Let's put the FX trigger here. And then I'm going to put the rest of the melody on the right. Those are the longest sounds I was able to find. Now let's see how we could play this. So this FX has a huge upriser, and we don't know where exactly it starts. We can just start it alongside this here initial hit sound. So this sound will just continue to the riser. The way you handle these background ambient sounds is that you just put them on a single button that you press at the start of your section, and then it just keeps playing in the background until the end of that section. Depending on how complicated these effects are, you can sometimes just mute the whole sections, and then play your section with the FX automatically playing from the arrangement. Here's an example. But we can also just play it from a button that we've assigned. Next I'm going to talk about choking. Did you notice how we could reuse the same sound even though it has a different length just because of the re-trigger of the sampler? You can also do this across multiple buttons. Consider this section in the drop. We have two of the same samples going back and forth at different times. So can we use this to our advantage? I've sampled that entire section in here and this is how I would have to play it. There are all of the same sounds here. It would be ideal if I could just play it something like this. So let's try with those two. Let's get rid of the rest. That works better, there are no gaps, but we have our samples overlapping with each other. In order to get rid of this overlapping, we can use choke groups. Expand your drum rack and show the input output section. You can see there is a choke option for each of your samples. In the drop down box, we have access to 16 choke groups. The idea is that in each choke group, there can only be one sample playing at a time. So if a second sample in the same choke group plays, the one that was playing before stops. We can use this to our advantage here. If we set both of our samples to a choke group, we can prematurely stop the previous sample from playing by playing a new one. 
And in this way, we can reuse even more sounds than usual. These choke groups are exclusive to this drum rack, and if you have multiple pages, each drum rack is going to have its own set of choke groups. Next, I'm going to sample the kick and clap from this part. Our kick has an extremely strong sub bass. If we don't have good headphones, we can see the waveform. When we mix this with our drop segment, it doesn't sound too well. The kick is barely audible, because it's being overpowered by the lead sound. A common trick in producing to mitigate this is called sidechaining. Sidechaining is the reason why we can use fades to remove drums. What the artist does when making the song, he uses a fade here in order to give this kick drum more punch. And so in the final song, if we also fade this out, we can effectively remove the kick, because the lead synth is already being faded in by the effect of the sidechain. What we can do is we can sidechain him live. And for this we're going to use a compressor. So at the end of the sample that we want to sidechain, we add a compressor. Expand it and turn on sidechain mode. Now we're going to take input from the sample that we want to trigger the sidechain effects. So I will name my kick drum, kick, and I will go back to my sample, and then take audio input from the drum rack, and then find the kick object. And then I bring the activation threshold down low. Generally between negative 20 and negative 35 decibels is okay. It's really song dependent, so you should play around with it and try not to overdo it. So now when I play the kick sound, we can notice that it's trying to lower the volume of the sample. The problem is our kick has a strong sub bass section to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to EQ this kick to only allow the high end to pass. The high frequency end is this here initial hit, and the low frequency is the sub bass we hear afterwards. We want the compressor to ignore the sub bass input, so we will set it to ignore low frequencies by only giving it a high pass filter. It already looks much better. Our kick has a click at the end, so to mitigate that, we can simply fade it out a little bit. Now all that's left to do is to play around with the threshold, and also the frequency, to make sure no sub bass is bleeding into our compressor. And now you can notice that if we play the two samples together, we can hear the kick much better. I can now copy this compressor over to the other sample, and then I can play it with the drums. You can use all these techniques to reuse more samples and have your project sound better. This section near the end has a lot of stuff going on. If you play it, we can barely hear the drums and the sound is so overpowering that we are hearing an ear rape kind of sound. This sound is achieved by clipping and it happens when the total volume crosses the zero decibel mark. If we have a look at the master, our master is going well above zero decibels. Ideally, you want to keep the volume below 0 decibels at all times. In order to keep the volume low, you can either modify the volumes of each instrument individually. Ideally, when you sample your cover, you would do this per sample in your main drum rack. Or you can altogether lower the volume of the master track by some amounts. That's going to be it for this video. I hope it helped you learn some advanced sampling techniques and how to handle stems and large amounts of instruments. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll answer as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye.